Hi guys, Adam from Midwest Panel Builders, and in today's video we're going to talk about Starlink in a small aircraft like the Sling TSI. Okay, so we are flying along in 915 Mike Whiskey, and we've had Starlink in this aircraft for like six or seven months now, and we've gotten a lot of questions about it and how it works, uh, so we figured we'd demonstrate it for you now. So we currently have in the back on the canopy the Starlink dish mounted over the heads of the uh, rear passengers, since we don't fly with rear passengers much anyways in this plane. Uh, other places that we have tried that work are up here in this section between the canopy bolts and the uh, lights, and we've also put them up on the glare shield and uh, had good success that way. So if you don't want to put suction cups on your canopy, you can always just throw it on the glare shield. For uh, power, that was very simple. We have a 12-volt cigarette lighter output in the back of the aircraft between the seats, uh, right where the feet go. And then we've got this switch on the panel called Rear Entertainment that turns that USB on and off. Uh, so if you go to Amazon or actually Starlink themselves sell it now, you can get a adapter that plugs into the cigarette lighter and then 12 volts is all it needs to power up the dish. The dish that we have is the Starlink Mini, so it's not much larger in footprint than an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, or A4 for our metric folks, and the uh, unit is about that thick, so it's a pretty low profile, pretty lightweight thing, and it draws roughly 40 to 50 watts of power when you, are, uh, when you have a connection. When it's first trying to start up, you're going to be 65 to 70, so make sure that uh, you're buying the components that can handle that wattage. Another piece of advice that I'll give you is it matters what subscription plan that you're using the Starlink on. So if you get the Starlink Mini, the plan that you can select is the global roaming plan, and you can get the 50 gig or unlimited data of that. However, they arbitrarily limit you to 100 miles an hour of ground speed when you do that, and in our experience, that speed limit is legit. It will stop you. So what we did is we put it under a business account, and then, which is easy to do, and then you have access to a plan called Local Priority, at least in the U.S. And Local Priority essentially means if you're in the lower 48 at any area, the service will work and the speeds will be, or I'm sorry, the ground speed limitation is 350 miles per hour. So that's what we did, and ever since we switched to that plan, it's worked flawlessly, uh, and it's a 50 gigabyte block that you buy, and every 50 gigabytes is something like $25. In an aircraft, we don't use that much data, so that's not a very big limitation to us. So, uh, rather than talk about it, let me show you how it works here. Okay, so here we are on the phone here. Let's show you how Starlink actually works while we're flying. So, I've got a screen recording going. You can see, the first thing I'll show you is that we are on airplane mode, and if we look at our Wi-Fi here, I am on MWPB Space, which is our Starlink dish. I will open the Starlink app, and you can see that it's still getting an orientation. That takes like 15 minutes for it to do, but we can go down to a speed test here, and we can see that we're currently getting about 100 megs of download. And this is actually the highest I've seen so far is somewhere around 250 while flying, and it gets better as the dish figures out its orientation. Uh, it'll slow down after a turn a little bit, but then it picks back up. So you can see our final number is 124 on download, 11 on upload, and that's even coming up a little bit. And then we'll see what the latency is, because latency is something where you'll notice, so 24 milliseconds, which is actually really good. So if you're on phone calls, the higher the latency, the longer the delay. So we'll open up YouTube here, and you can just kind of see, we'll, I don't know, Midwest Panel Builders. And you can see that we've got a uh, good connection there open the channel, pull up one of our latest videos, and it comes up really fast. So it works great. One last thing that we'll show is phone calls, because as a pilot, I think that's probably the more common thing that you'll do is call or text people. So let's give Steve a call. Starlink, how's it sound? Sounds good. All right. That's loud and clear. I can definitely hear the airplane, but it's uh, I can hear you just fine. Sweet. All right. Well, that was it. All right. All right. See you. Bye. Yeah, short and concise, the way I like it.
Uh, so, as you can tell, it's as if we just had normal internet in here. I mean, the speeds aren't the fastest speeds in the world, but, you know, by, by typical measures of what you would ever possibly want to do, you know, streaming music or videos or phone calls or whatever, it's more than adequate. And this unlocks a huge capability. I think this is one of the most revolutionary things for the small aircraft is having that because now I can go on four flight or armor pilot or any of them, I can get internet weather so I can get way faster updates versus ADSB and frankly even Sirius XM in a lot of cases. So to me the sixty five dollars a month that costs unlocks way more than that in capabilities. It's a good value for what it is. So Hope you found this video helpful to put one of these in your aircraft and uh, start enjoying some internet while you're flying. If you have any questions about how to do this, uh, especially if you're somebody in a sling and you want to know how we did it, maybe a little bit more detail, uh, we'll be happy to help. But honestly, it's stupid simple. Put it somewhere that it has a good view of the sky and give it 12 volt power and that's all it needs. One thing I will point out really quick, this canopy is fiberglass. It does have a paint with a very high metallic content, actually, but it's not, um, it's not enough to stop the signals from going through, and there's no parachute cables in this aircraft, so we have perfect fiberglass here. If you have all metal, like if you're in a Cessna type, or if you have parachute cables, your mileage may vary. So in that case, I'd run in the glare shield, or if you have a back window, again, like the Cessna type, that's where I would put it if it was me. Uh, but again, if you have any questions, let us know. We're happy to help. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.